Today we'll be looking at Chapter 6 of the Healy and Proust textbook that discusses estimation procedures. The goal of estimation procedures is to estimate population variables or parameters from statistics that are computed from samples. In politics, this type of sampling is most commonly used in public opinion polls and election projections. However, it has also become a popular way to estimate variables on a wide variety of social and cultural issues. When conducting this type of sample, it is important to make sure that the sample is unbiased and has effective distribution. An estimator is unbiased if the mean of its sampling distribution is equivalent to the population value in question. For example, sample proportions, PS, are unbiased. Having unbiased means in sample proportion allows us to determine the probability that they lie within a given distance of values we are trying to estimate. Efficiency is also key in the estimating process. Efficiency is the extent to which the sampling distribution is clustered about its mean. Greater clustering will mean higher efficiency, while lower clustering will result in a lower sampling efficiency. There are two specific types of estimation procedures, point estimate and confidence intervals. Let's take a look at point estimating. Point estimating is used to estimate a population with one sample, providing a single estimate. While it does not necessarily give the most accurate estimate of a population, this type of sampling provides a best-guessed answer. For example, 65% of Canadian respondents do not support Bill C-51 due to the concern that freedom of expression and privacy will be threatened. The second form of estimation is confidence intervals. This type of sampling provides a range of estimation values for a given population rather than a single number. Confidence intervals are safer to use than point intervals as you are more likely to include the population parameter when a range of values is guessed. For example, 61 to 70% of Canadian respondents do not support Bill C-51 due to concerns that freedom of expression and privacy will be threatened. In this example, there is a difference of 9%. This difference is also known as the margin of error or sampling error. Now let's figure out how to do a confidence interval. Firstly, we need to establish the confidence level. In order to do this, we find a middle ground and more or less confidence. In social sciences, a level between 0.05 or 95% and 0.01, 99% are most commonly used. Here's an example. If a 95% confidence level is taken, we give our research 5%. Therefore, the probability of 0.05 is 95%. The percentage or estimated likelihood of the probability being wrong is known as alpha or A for short. For z-scores, refer to chapter 4 of the textbook or to lecture slides. To show you how estimation procedures work, we will be looking at application 6.1 from the Healy and Proust textbook, so turn to page 156 and follow along. The question presents the following scenario. Based on a random sample of 15,222 households, the Survey of Household Spending, SHS, reveals that the average Canadian household spends $65,535 annually. Total expenditure includes consumption of food, shelter, clothing, transportation, recreation, education, tobacco and alcohol products, and so on, as well as personal taxes, personal insurance payments, and pension and other contributions. Given the SHS sample, a reported mean annual expenditure of $65,535, what is the estimate of the population mean? If we set alpha at 0.05, the corresponding z-score will be plus or minus 1.96 and will have a 95% confidence interval. The equation for confidence interval is ci equals x bar plus or minus z bracket s over square root of n minus 1 close bracket. Now let's solve 6.1. Step 1. Let's write down our givens. x bar is equal to 65,535. Alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Our z-score is 1.96. S is equal to 51,246. And N is equal to 15,222. Step 2. As mentioned before, let's write out our confidence interval equation. The equation is CI equals X bar plus or minus Z bracket S over the square root of N minus 1 close bracket. Step 3. Let's sub in our givens in the equation. CI equals 65,535 plus or minus 
bracket 51,246 over the square root of 15,222 minus 1, close bracket. Step 4. Let's calculate and find out what the confidence interval is. The confidence interval equals 65,535 plus or minus 817. Step 5. Therefore, the population mean is greater than or equal to 64,718 and less than or equal to 66,352. Flip to page 159 and have a look at application question 6.2. Canadians overwhelmingly believe that global warming produced by greenhouse gases is a real and major threat to future generations. According to a leisure marketing survey, 81% of a random sample of 1,500 Canadians said yes to the question. In your view, should the government of Canada be tougher on Canadian citizens and corporations to ensure that collectively Canadians reduce greenhouse gas emissions? Based on this finding, what is the estimate of the population value? Note that the percentage of those that said yes to the question has been stated as a proportion. If we set up alpha at 0.05, the corresponding z-score will be plus or minus 1.96 and the interval estimate of the population proportion will be. Now let's solve 6.2. Step 1. Let's establish our given variables. Our population sample is equal to 0.81. Our number of cases is equal to 1500. Alpha is equal to 0.05. Our z-score is 1.96 and our population value is equal to 0.5. Step 2. Write out the equation for confidence interval for proportions. The equation is confidence interval equals ps plus or minus z square root of pu bracket 1 minus pu close bracket over n. Step 3. Calculate and solve for confidence interval with our givens. Remember the steps at bed mass. Step 4. CI equals 0.81 plus or minus 0.03. Therefore, the proportion of the population that believes the federal government needs to get tough on citizens and corporations to reduce greenhouse gas emissions is between 0.78 and 0.84, or 78% and 84%. The interval has a 5% chance of not containing the population value. We hope that with these application questions, you understand sample mean, sample proportion, and understand what the numbers mean in relation to the given question. Now, we're going to be moving on to SPSS. Equations for estimate procedures can be plotted and graphed using SPSS. Go to Google, search for Healy Statistics under Nelson Education. Find it? Good. Click on Statistics Second Edition. Look to the left-hand side taskbar and click on Datasets and Codebooks. A page will open with several user guides and codebooks. Click on number 3, which is labeled 2006 General Social Survey, GSS, the shortened version. Once 2006 GSS shortened version has been downloaded, open it. Once opened, two screens will open, the output screen and the data set. The data set screen will have two tabs at the bottom of the screen, data view and variable view. We are going to be selecting the variable. View. Now that we are in variable view, let's look at all the different variables. We will be finding the confidence interval mean for total income. Scroll down and find total income or T-O-T-I-N-C. We can see that total income is measured on a scale and they do not have any values. Now for constructing the confidence interval for mean, go and select Analyzed Descriptive Statistics and Explore. A dialog box will appear. From the list, select Total Income and import it into the dependent list. Once imported, select Statistics, and this is where we will select the Confidence Interval 1. Once we select Statistics, another box will appear allowing you to change the Confidence Interval. For this example, we will choose 95%. Click Continue and the data will appear in the output screen. From the output screen, we have our summary showing all the total number of cases and our descriptives. The descriptive shows us a large list of information we both need and don't need. The list shows our mean, confidence interval, median, variance, standard deviation, minimum, maximum, range, interquartile range, skewness, and kurtosis. For confidence interval mean, we only need to know mean, upper, and lower bound, also known as the positive and negative value we have in the confidence interval equation. So what does this mean? Well, this means that the average total income is between $31,285.99 and $36,248.13. 
and that we have a 5% chance of being wrong. Now we are going to be making an error graph for our confidence interval mean. Go up to the menu bar and select Graphs. A drop menu will appear and select Legacy Dialogues. And from that drop down menu, select Error and Bar. Once the error bar is selected, a box will appear. The box will give you various options. We are going to select Simple and Summaries of Separate Variables. After Simple and Summaries of Separate Variables has been selected, a list with different variables will appear. Scroll down and import total income to error bars and change bar represented to confidence interval for mean and select OK and your error bar will appear. The error bar graph tells us what was illustrated in the chart, the mean and the upper and lower limit with 95% accuracy. Now we are going to find confidence intervals for sample proportions. Going back to the data set window, we are going to be using legal marital status for proportions. We can see the different values for the legal marital status ranging from divorced to widowed. To construct confidence intervals for sample proportions, select Analyze from the top of the menu, Descriptive Statistics and Frequency. After selecting Frequency, a dialog box will appear, and we are going to scroll down the variable list and import in Legal Marital Status. After importing Legal Marital Status, select OK. In the output screen, a chart of all the legal marital status will appear. It will show frequency, percent, valid percent, and cumulative percent. We want to find the proportions of Canadians that are married. We take the percentage of legally married Canadians, which is 44.7%, and input into the confidence interval equation for proportions. Results from the equation, we can estimate that between 42% and 48% of Canadians are married. We now know how to construct confidence intervals for the sample mean, error graph and confidence intervals proportion sample. For this, we referenced Healy and Prue's Statistics, a tool for social science research, second Canadian edition.